So I've given the seats just a quick wipe down and the steering wheel looks a little bit better now. Um, not quite sure how to get all the bits out of the pores though. Um, but I'm probably going to put seat covers on because some of the seats are actually um, tearing. They're not very, they're not very strong. So uh, yeah, so I've done that. The next step, I'm going to make sure that the car actually comes to life before I do any other work on it. So behind, behind the seats, if I can somehow do this with one hand, you can see the nuts behind here. So that's what I'm taking out right now and I'll slide the bottom seat up and take a look at the electronics underneath and uh, yeah I'm going to hook it up to the other car with jump leads and see if I can get some life through it and if that's the case I'll start pulling everything apart that I need to do in order to get it alive and up to the garage for an MOT. So here is the seat taken off and everything underneath um, it's so much more familiar now. I've been playing around with Jeep Wizards for a year. Um, this is the DC model, you can tell by the controller. Um, and that little unit in the back there that wasn't on mine, that is for heating the seat. So I'm going to try and keep that intact if I can get seat covers or something, so I can keep the heated seating. And there's the, uh, there's the charge controller, DC to DC converter. So what I'm going to do right now is to unplug the old batteries just while I test it. I'm going to get some jump leads, hook them to hook them to these terminals and see if the car switches on because everything else looks intact. I don't see anything being ripped out even though the, even though the dash is loose. I think they were just getting in for whatever this stuff is that they put in. I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, maybe a hands-free, I don't know. But uh, but yes, yeah, so that's my next job. I'm going to see if I can bring this G Wiz to life within <laughs> within a couple of hours of having it on the driveway. So I connected something and I heard a noise. So let's have a look. Do we have any life? I'm not sure actually. Something came off and then went, but there's currently nothing. The ignition's not working. The contact is not working. Hmm. Let's have a look. So we've got lights. I think, yeah. We have lights. So it seems to be just a contactor issue. Probably to do with this key fob here. So the lights seem to all be working. I'm going to have a little look and see if I can figure out why the contactor isn't switching on. It's probably to do with the ignition more than anything. So we'll give that a shot and see what else we can uncover. So here's a little bit of a conundrum. I've bridged the two just to see if I can get power to the motor. The fan for the motor isn't turning on at all. So I'm just trying to figure out what exactly caused that. Now, there's two fuses down there, but the main fuse that deals with the motor is intact. So what could be the problem unless the controller itself is actually dead? I wonder. But we have power. Unless it's to do with that, perhaps, but... We have power, but there doesn't seem to be any... There doesn't seem to be anything going on with the motor. 
So that's what I need to find out. So after having a look around a little bit, I uh, cannot seem to get it to start. So um, judging by what's actually working, the lights are working, the hazards are working, the indicators do not work, and the blower does not work. So my guess is it is definitely something to do with that ignition, that ignition, why the rest isn't starting. And that's why I can't seem to get this to start either, because I wonder if it needs 12 volt feed in order to switch it on for reading on the laptop. had to actually get to the ignition um, normally so it's been quite an interesting journey something I've not done before thankfully all of these are numbered so it shouldn't be too hard to put them back together and um, I remember this this part had little clips you have to take off now under there you've got a set of screws to pull this this part out and maybe I'll get a closer look at it that way um, otherwise it's going to have to be full-on removal of dash which I'm kind of hoping it doesn't reach that point so yeah I'm going to carry on and try and get in there new day um, I'm having a go at trying to fix the car now something that crossed my mind last night was uh, the possibility of a faulty charge cap switch because the dash worked it turned everything worked on the dash pre-ignition but nothing seemed to work post ignition. So I've taken off this wheel arch because um, last night I was testing the cap and I wasn't hearing any click sound in there. Um, so I took the cap off, I, I took the wheel arch off and you can see this switch dangling down below. So now when I press that switch, you hear the contactor engage. So there we go, problem solved. And as we don't need this switch really, I'm going to um, pull that out and just connect the two wires together and that should solve the issue. But other than that, the G-Wiz seems alive. So uh, we'll be able to patch it all up and get it on the road. There we go, I turn the key, click, it goes on. So now that means we should have access to all of this. That works. I've taken that out so I can't test that. Now if I turn this... There you go, you can hear the whir of the motor. And if I touch the accelerator gently in reverse... We have reverse. That's cool. That's really cool. We have life. We have life. That is very, very, very good news. And I'll end this episode here. Um, the next step is to start putting the car back together, um, finding a set of batteries and getting it ready for an MOT. And once that's done, I shall start thinking about lithium and everything else I was going to do to the car. So there we go. It didn't take too much to get it to work. Um, just got to get the batteries.